Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's a good day. The fog is settling. Today I'll be explaining the second step of the five step planning process that I use for getting your spring garden going. I won't be doing it here. I'll be doing it over at my sister's house. My sister did a few raised beds, I think like three, two or three. She actually made them out of recycled pallets. So that'd be fun to go look over there, ask her some questions about her first year having those raised beds. Oh, see if she liked them, what she learned about doing gardening and all that good stuff. And you'll get to meet my little nephew maybe. That'd be fun. Hello, hello. So this is my brother-in-law and sister's house. Got a little cute little house here. Got the landscape going along. They actually have some Russian sage right here. <laughs> Russian sage is one of my favorites. I mean, it just smells good, looks good. And in the winter time, it gets like these wispy gray branches that come out. I think whenever you have like a nice backdrop of a dark green plant, which they don't really have that here, but if you had a backdrop of dark green, the gray air looks really good. So Russian sage, good choice. I had some tomatoes here that was going along. I have these beds which are growing some food right now, but really pretty much done. Hannah, my sister's gonna tell us a little bit about the story behind these, how they made them, and the experience that she had with growing. One of the focuses of today is gonna be the second step, the second step of the planning process for your springtime gardens. The second step is to eliminate. So the first step that we already did was the seed step. You have an idea, you have a vision, you've imagined your space, and hopefully you guys have been had the time to write down some of those ideas, draw it out, you know, whatever it takes to get those ideas out of your mind onto paper and potentially come into reality. Now you gotta take all those ideas and eliminate the ones that you're not gonna wanna do. It's basically saying no to everything else, but saying yes to the plan that you actually want to do. You know, for my garden, I had all kinds of options for the backyard, but I ended, ended up deciding on a no-till garden. And then now for the front yard, as I'm continuing to plan for springtime, I have to really think about what am I actually gonna be planting, what's feasible, what is gonna be beautiful and fruitful. Thinking through those things uh, and thinking really about what I want and what is gonna be best for me, but also what's gonna be best for my family, for uh, those around me, my neighbors. Thinking through all that is this second step. You gotta eliminate, basically it's the planning step. Like Hannah, my sister had to eliminate other options to decide on some raised beds. She had thought about doing like an in-ground garden here. She thought about doing all kinds of other options, but this is the one that she kind of landed on because it was doable and because they had the materials, these are pallet wood. Uh, they had the, the soil from the landscape company my brother-in-law owns. But enough said, let's go inside and meet Hannah and Ian and little Isaiah. She's gonna share some fun stuff about her experience with these raised beds. I'm excited about this. Josh, you're very excited. Excited about food? Food. I love food. 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 How excited are you? It's exciting. That's the one. Baby, coolest baby toy I think I've seen all year. And check this out. What? That won't move. I'm intrigued. While we go out here and Hannah shares the story of these raised beds. My sister Hannah, my lovely sister Hannah, we're the two freckled kids. We got all the freckles. I think the she has Irish a, came out in us. Oh yeah, she, she's got a few more than me maybe, I think. I think I do. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> Can't but, count them. Um, so we've got these raised beds. Hannah, I just wanted to hear some of the story of the backstory. Why'd you do them? 
how'd it go. Yeah. I know you, it was a bit of an experiment. And uh, yeah, just share the story and share some tips and tricks of what you learned, what not to do, what to do. <laughs> I learned a lot about what not to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, my, my hope was to have just some fresh, fresh produce around the house. Um, I wanted, I found myself going to the grocery store often for things like cilantro and, I don't know, kale and lettuce and things that I thought, you know, I could get a lot more nutritional value out of these if I could pick them fresh in my, near my home. Yeah. Um, and also just things that I was like, you know, when you want to make salsa, you hate to go to the store and go get your cilantro again, yeah. where it goes bad really quickly. So, um, so I decided to plant some things by the house. Nice. Um, so we did three beds, and um, honestly, I think I I way over planted. That was my number one mistake. <laughs> I um, tried to warn you. <laughs> yeah, you did warn like, me. Too many You're seeds. Like, don't do too many. I basically put entire seed packets in like a square foot, <laughs> so that no, doesn't work. But um, so these we built these out of um, just some pallets that we had. We cut them to the right size. And then I stapled um, like this uh, fabric. What's yeah. that called? Landscaping Landscape fabric. fabric. Um, I stapled that and just kind of made like a a bowl, basically. Yeah. We dumped in um, the dirt. We had like a like a mushroom compost. Mushroom, yeah, mushroom compost Mix. and topsoil. Is there anything else? Topsoil. It was mushroom compost, was topsoil, and then they had some leaf litter in there, like decomposed leaves. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, and that did really great. I feel like things mm -hmm. thrived in that. Um, yeah. I feel like we had a lot of stuff come up. Um, mm -hmm. Earlier in the spring, I like when it was still cold out, I planted some th seeds in one of those like trays beforehand. Mm -hmm. And I think I did like two or three of everything um, in yeah. just little, little pods. Mm -hmm. Some of those worked, some of them didn't. Um, and I think that's why I overplanted because I didn't <laughs> trust the process. I just thought, yeah. Okay, if inside these things didn't do great, then oh my goodness, outside is gonna kill them all. So I yeah. planted all of them. <laughs> so to give you an example, I took a bunch of things out recently because it was way overgrown. But basically, this was these are my beets, which yeah. I think are finally like, well, yeah, you're good. They're big. There. Yeah, that's a good bit here, but yeah. we got our beets coming through. Yeah. Um, but right here I had tomatoes. Right here I had cucumbers. And then right here, I planted a lot of spaghetti squash, which one mound of spaghetti squash is supposed to produce like seven squashes. And I planted the whole seed packet. <laughs> and so like my, literally my whole yard, like not whole yard, but a like massive section of my Everywhere. yard was that. We actually took some out and replanted them over here. And then they grew out like in that yeah. area. So how many did you get? Um, I didn't get very many, and I think it's because I way over planted, like they didn't have the nutrition yeah. that they needed. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I got seven, something like that. Yeah. I could have gotten more. I had some like small ones, but they just never squash. Really, winter grew. squash always needs tons of space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I definitely learned that. Learn that. And here I had, um, I had two different types of kale, mm -hmm. um, kind of in this section, and then I had a bed of lettuce right here. And then I had um, basil, cilantro, mint, chives, parsley. Yeah. I think all of that was kind of in this section. And as you can see, some of that is like still, still here. Still going. Um, some things are completely died out. And then I actually uprooted a bunch of things. And now something is eating my kale at this point. But I really enjoyed having that. I had this. Um, Let me check. Oh, you've got aphids. Oh, there you go. See those little guys? Aphids there. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep, and a part of that is most likely because of how closely things were planted. Yeah. Densely planted crops tend to be more disease prone because, you know, the diseases know that the plant is kind of stressed already. Mm. So they come in, they're like, oh, a lot of food. And also yeah. they're touching, like look at all the leaves that are yeah. touching. Makes it for easy contact. Yes, yeah. Well, so the only thing that I did that I was thankful I planted <laughs> thick was the lettuce. And yeah. that was because I could just like cut it yeah. off and, and eat leaf them. Lettuce. And that was, yeah, leaf lettuce. That was really great. Everything else I should have had way more space for. Also spinach you can do like that. Yeah. Rad radishes. I didn't do any spinach, but. Um, so 
kale, as far as kale goes, I did like a mixed kale and then I did, I think it's called black kale. There's probably some other word for it, but it's this one. Okay. And I really loved having this because it came off like you could easily cut your lettuce, I mean yeah. your leaves off. And um, mm -hmm. it goes great for salads and also like in like sauteed and I feel like I would use it more often than the yeah. other kale. Nice. And it seemed like it stayed cleaner. I don't know why that was. Mm. This last okay. one. This is why I'm saying I did way too much. So right here I had um, jalapeno peppers, more tomatoes, and then this was my like flower patch. And then I have some rosemary that's kind of coming. It's still going? Yeah. yeah. Um, we had, we honestly planted so many tomatoes and we had three different varieties of tomatoes in like those two little spots. Mm -hmm. So we took out plants, or Ian did, and put them literally like two plants right here and then about five plants. <laughs> all across our house and they were like massive bushes that yeah. I ended up we got a lot of tomatoes out of them. We actually had a neighbor who would stop by once in a while. We had never met him before and he like stopped by and he's like, Can I have some of your tomatoes? Yeah. And he came by like three times and got like huge bags of tomatoes. Nice. So that's actually one of the I've got a five step spring planning process. Uh -huh. And the last one is to share. So I think it's cool you guys did that. It kind of brings the community loved, together. Yeah, I love that he came and asked and, and we had plenty to give away. I gave away a ton of, one thing I also planted was um, a certain kind of broccoli mm -hmm. and I ended up taking all that out because it just like took over. Like mm -hmm. when they say one broccoli head for like a full square space, they yeah. mean it. Yeah. Like it, <laughs> got, it took over. So the things that I really loved having, um, I loved having tomatoes and I loved having my kale and spinach, or my kale and lettuce, sorry. So yeah, I love, I wish that I had dedicated one bed just to my lettuce mm -hmm. and um, yeah, one bed just to lettuce, one bed just to kale, and then one bed to herbs. Um, and then tomatoes maybe along the house or something like that, and it's basically can really like flourish and grow. Yeah. Um, I feel like I didn't use everything else as often as I wanted to, and I had so much of it mm -hmm. that um, for us, it just, I couldn't eat it all. Yeah. <laughs> so, but like the beets, I plan on doing some fun things with the beets and making like beet chips and uh, you can make like a beet hummus and there's some really fun. Cool. Fun recipes with that. So, I would just say really look at like when to plant things and then plan accordingly. Think through the things that you really are going to use often mm -hmm. and then just stick, stick to like a few things. If you're a first time grower, I tried a wide variety of things thinking this is exciting I'm gonna use all of this and I'm like gonna go straight from always going to the grocery store to just using things in my yard and the reality is like you have to start small in making yeah. making those shifts and so um, if you can pick like two or three things that you are excited about growing that you're gonna use often and then just stick with that for the first year see how it goes and really learn the process because I think it does take time to like figure out how to how to incorporate the things that you're growing into your meals and like mm -hmm. when they're fresh and available because mm -hmm. you can't just like go to the store whenever you want to and <laughs> it's fresh you have to get it when, or use it when it's fresh in your own yard yeah so, but yeah i've loved loved having it i'm proud of her she's doing good exactly what she said is starting out small that's what i always say to with folks yeah which is start out with what's manageable make your plan figure out what feels manageable and then scale back a little bit I would say from there because we have all these big plans yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like literally which I would say this amount of space is manageable but yes but I wish I had only done a few varieties of or not yeah. varieties but a few different yeah types of yeah you know, and things you would actually use but mm -hmm. the I think one but of the best things you grew know. from the garden was your experience and the yeah and what she learned from yeah. what to do what not to do and every year you're just improving doesn't, gardening doesn't have to be a stressful thing. It can be really a, just a fun ex learning, growing experience. Honestly, that's something I would add is I was so amazed by how once I once I got things in the ground, like the, the most time intensive thing that I ever did was building these boxes. Like mm -hmm. once that was done, I put seeds in the ground and God did the rest. Like yeah. they just grow and it was really fun to be able to you come out. You had good out. soil. I did have good soil, but it was really fun to come out and look and see like, oh wow. You know, I have little mm -hmm. tiny sprouts, and then mm -hmm. it literally felt like within a week I had a huge garden that was brimming with 
with yep. leaves at first and then produce later. And yep. um, so watching that process is really fun, and it mm -hmm. can be very hands off except for like watering and yeah. And doing it in a bed like this, you don't really need to weed very much. So yeah. that's nice. Much more manageable. Yeah. Thanks, Hannah. You're welcome. Good family. Have Good luck blessed with an awesome family. Urban yeah, you farming. guys can do this. Yes. I was gonna say if, if Hannah can do it, you can do it, but that's not true. No, actually, it's Hannah very can true. do anything. No, that's very <laughs> true. I I have can't tell you how many times I bought basil to put in my house, like a basil plant. Yeah. And it dies every single time. So outside is best. Let's go back inside and enjoy family time. Mm -hmm. oh, I like our door. Yes. Hi, is that good? You are really chowing down on that thing. The monkey chunk. <laughs> Hi, bud. Hey. He knows he's on camera. Man. He's like, I'm famous. Thanks for watching, Josh. Oh, hey. No problem, man. <laughs> <laughs> here real quick and say goodbye to you guys thanks for watching this episode of the garden guy channel remember step two is to eliminate so just like my sister did we have to make a plan make a big plan and it's okay to dream big like I'm saying dream big but also after we do that we need to scale back to see what's actually manageable and doable and uh, whittle it down to what we're gonna do the first year we're gonna do this spring so, like those beds, she made them like right before she planted. You all have an advantage because we're learning about this right now. So, you can be already making those beds or making your space that you're going to be using for growing food right now. Good times with the family. I'm blessed with an awesome, awesome family. I got to get back in there and have a blast with them. So, y'all keep on having good Christmas times. Where are we? <clears throat> Ooh, sometimes my voice does weird stuff. <laughs> Anyways, see you guys next time. Beet greens would actually taste really good. Sauteed up, beet greens are so good.